I just, I just want, want to understand. understand. One of the most overlooked resources in Minecraft is the crafting table. This is a test world. It's 1.8. I've got it on a local area network. And it's still very laggy because I don't have an adequate computer to run 1.8 and probably any subsequent versions. This is just a basic tree punching thing, except that there's some stuff that I do a little different. You see how the blocks are not disappearing when I punch them and stuff. I can't do anything about it. I left this in just so you could see the issues that I'm dealing with. This is a short tree, so I'm just going to go ahead and punch it down. Then I'll go to a tall tree. If I go, if I start in a world with a tall tree, uh, you notice I don't start on the bottom block. I start breaking it at eye level. I should have done that third block too. I go ahead and make my crafting table in the tree. My first crafting table so that I can immediately make an axe. I'm also having issues with my mouse. I can't um, do that slurpy thing where you just slide it around and the blocks go in the spots. Yeah, now I realize I should be up one more. So now I can place my crafting table in the tree, which means that I'm a little bit up out of the way of the vision of creepers and even skeletons, which means also that I can go ahead and craft an axe. Now, if my game weren't so slow because of all the lagging issues, uh, this would be very helpful in speed challenges like Brian Lurk on 111's bingo challenges. And it would also be very useful in um, UHC because you've already got your crafting table, you've already got your axe, and you're saving yourself some time. These are spruce trees, so I don't have to be too worried about sapling drops and that sort of thing. But I will collect what saplings I can just in case I decide I want to build a tree underground, grow a tree underground. So I'm collecting my wood and I'm climbing my tree. And I make sure that I always have a little extra so that I can craft multiple tables. Now, right now, I'm not going to do that. Right now, I'm just going to make my first set of tools out of wood. I only use half the uh, logs that I've got. I only use half the planks to make sticks. So just in case I need charcoal and so that I'll always have some planks in my bar as well as some sticks. Now it's time to start digging to look for cobblestone to make cobble tools. I try to keep my tools in the right place in my um, hotbar so that I can use the number keys and instead of scrolling so that I can use my number keys so that I can get to my, my items quickly, my tools and my weapons. Sometimes I forget but at least they'll always be pretty much in the right place. At the beginning of the game, it's kind of hard to do stuff like that because, look, I've got the logs in space one and dirt in space two and so on. I hear lava down here. I don't know what it means, but it could be good news or it could be awful. So I'm standing away from it, just in case. I don't particularly want those blocks to burn up, but I don't want myself to burn up either. The way I count blocks is instead of trying to memorize how many blocks I need for everything, I just say pickaxe two, three, axe two, three, shovel one, sword one, two, and um, furnace count to eight. So that way I know I've got enough blocks to start with. This time it slurped so I can make a furnace right. Sometimes it doesn't do that. I don't know if it's the mouse or if it's the game's ability to register the mouse commands, but it's getting to be a little creepy. Uh, an old computer. Standard set of tools. I keep my wooden ones because I will use them for burning later. 
Now, if this were a regular survival game, uh, I would probably keep the pickaxe, because I always like to keep my first pickaxe as a memento of where I started out in the game. Also, because I'm vision impaired, it's difficult for me to see sticks, because the numbers are in front of the sticks. So, it's hard for me to tell if I've got sticks in my inventory. I should probably find a spot, a spot in my inventory up high where I always keep sticks and another one where I always keep uh, planks. This sounds suspicious to me because I hear lava and there's iron nearby and remember what I said about bait ores? That there are ores in the game that will lead you to things? Uh-huh. And that could have led me right down a cliff. I did pick up that block, but only by luck. So I'm in a ravine, and I got lucky enough to find iron. I don't see any coal to start with. I do have in my inventory enough stuff to make a little bit of charcoal. I'm not ready to deal with that yet because I don't have a darn thing. I don't even have food. I have only stone tools, and I don't know what's down there. The reason the game looks so bright without torches is that I had to set my gamma up. If you want me to, I'll do a tutorial about adjusting a gamma. My gamma is set at a thousand percent, which means that it's as bright as daylight, even underground and at night. Which is a little tricky because I have to remember to put lighting sources around, and sometimes I forget that. But the game is much darker now. In this version, it's a lot more like the old Beta 1.7.3. It's a lot darker now, especially the nether. The nether I can almost not navigate at all because I'm vision impaired. I cannot see the nether. And I hear really expert professional Minecraft players who've been playing this game a long time. See, I only wanted one piece of coal and it picked up two without my permission. I've heard a lot of professional Minecraft players complaining about the darkness and it makes videos almost impossible. I wish Minecraft would finally figure out that there are Let's Players out here who work on YouTube, that YouTube compresses files, and that they're much darker than they look when we're recording them. But apparently Minecraft is going to be dark, and so I set my camera up so that I can see and so that it makes a decent YouTube video. In UHC you would never do this, of course, because it gives away your position. Put a torch at the outside of your hidey hole, but I'm going to be going out there in a little bit hunting food, and I'm not playing UHC right now, so I went ahead and put a torch. Otherwise, there are other things you can do to hide your, uh, your hole. For instance, things that look more natural, you can put a flower at the entrance to your hole, or uh, if you find some of that stone, I, I like the granite because it's pink. It's, another, it's also a good way to hide your crafting table is to put a few blocks of uh, stone around it. So you know it's there, but nobody else does. It just looks like a natural rock formation. I have my furnace now, so that I can, my second furnace, so that I can cook food and iron at the same time, or whatever, make charcoal and food at the same time, that sort of thing. Usually I make multiple furnaces, but I like to reserve my resources until I've had time to mine enough stuff. I've gone hunting, I found some sheep, and I found some chickens, which is good because I can make arrows as soon as I find gravel. Don't have a bow yet, but that'll come. And then I'm hollowing out a place to put a bed because I did farm some sheep, and I have the wool. Now what I didn't do here that I should have done was made it three by three by three. I made it three wide and I made it three long, but I didn't make it three tall, just to make sure that I don't glitch in blocks. The game seems to be having difficulty finding both mobs, hostile and passive mobs, and players. Players are glitching into walls and suffocating to death for no good reason, getting on and off horses. There's problems with portals. Uh, being able to enter and exit portals. These are a lot of players. I'm seeing this on a lot. Let's plays a lot. People are needlessly dying because the game doesn't seem to be able to locate either us or the mobs. So anything you can do to ameliorate that, to make it not as bad, yeah, not a dumb plan. So here we go with the bed and setting my spawn point. 
eat a little food before I sleep. And that's it. The other point is when you have enough wood, make a stack of crafting tables. Always have a stack of them on you so that as you're working, you can leave them without having to break them and pick them up. Again, this is very useful in speed challenges and so on, and even UHC. And like I said, you can obscure your crafting table with either a few blocks of dirt or I like that granite because it's bright pink and I can see it easily so I can remember where my crafting table was. Or leave it out in the open to psych out opponents, especially if you go to another location that's nowhere near where you've left your crafting tables. They may come looking for you and, of course, they won't be able to find you because you're nowhere near the crafting table. Normally, my inventory has four of each tool, but since we're just starting out, I'm making three of each just so that I can work pretty quickly without having to stop and make more tools. So I make multiples of things. Eventually, I will have multiple swords. I'll have at least one stone sword for killing passive mobs, and I will have an iron sword for hostile mobs and for players, until such a point as I can get diamonds for players, of course. So that's basically it. Multiple crafting tables. It takes as much time to make one crafting table as it does to make a stack of them. So why not? Thanks for watching!